From the Sunshine State, this is Tampa Bay's Tan Talk. Good morning. Welcome to Dispatch Radio. We have another great show for you this morning. Dispatch Radio, of course, is brought to you by theglobaldispatch.com. We bring you all the news and catch you up on all the things that are going. Throw a little commentary and education your way. This morning we're going to have Paul St. John. He's going to come on. He's going to talk to us about this whole government shutdown, the economy, Obamacare, all those kinds of things. We're going to have Matt Carter. He's the TV guru himself. He is at cartermatt.com. And, of course, our favorite... The movie expert himself, Mike Smith. With me as always this morning, we gave, we gave Bob a, a morning off this morning. He's hopefully enjoying some time relaxing with his family and that sort of thing. However, he has a track record of calling in, folks, so stay alert. But with me as always, our executive producer in training. Good morning. How's everyone doing? How Jake doing? Jones up a uh, bright, bright eyed this morning here, ready to, uh, ready to get at it. Yep, yeah, ready to go. That's right. So we have a very special offer this week. Uh, the next couple of shows will have a, a great sponsorship that we've been able to partner with DreamWorks. We'll be presenting an advanced screen of The Fifth Estate. It's a new film that's getting ready to come out on October 18th. It stars Benedict Cumberbatch. He was the villain in Star Trek Into Darkness. He is, of course, the uh, main star of BBC One's Sherlock and has a lot of fame overseas. He will be playing Julian Assange in this movie where it centers on WikiLeaks and the uh, outing of a lot of the secret documents and those kinds of things that made headlines. So stay tuned and listen uh, throughout the show here. We're going to be able to uh, have you uh, opportunities to call in, win tickets, and hopefully be able to join us for that screening. So um, this morning, if you haven't seen the headlines, uh, it's it, it's government shutdown all the time. That's pretty much the fear-mongering that you're hearing and uh, – You know, it's all about Obamacare, it's all about this, it's all about that. Reality is, that's not exactly what's in in, in the bill. The bill is, you know, here's the money, we're ready to move forward, and uh, we're not going to shut anything down. We just don't want to fund Obamacare, but that's not what you're going to hear. So we need to um, make sure that you know, and you're objectively analyzing the news and the headlines so we know what's going on, because... um, it's important that as we move forward, we actually have the facts. Now, Ted Cruz, he talked for 21 hours. Point of all that? Yeah, bring a lot of awareness, I guess. Not a lot else to go on. Um, no real information. He wasn't able to really bring anything new to the table. I'm not sure that that really wins a lot of hearts and minds to the argument or anything like that. However, um, it, uh, it does at least... Uh, bring the information up as far as uh, the need to discuss Obamacare funding. And that's really kind of where I think the Ted Cruz thing came into play. Now, personal note, I enjoyed the fact that there was a nice Star Wars reference. Dr. Seuss was read at one point. So, hey, if you've got to pass 21 hours, you might as well throw in some pop culture uh, entertainment for someone like me. Now, let's move ahead a little bit to where we really are. Fact number one is there is no budget. The president has never submitted a budget. We, I think we're on our fourth or fifth year now without a budget of any kind. What they're doing and what they're moving forward with is called a continuing resolution. In other words, we're just going to keep writing checks, we're going to keep spending money, and we're going to basically do the same thing we're doing. That's why when we talk about finances, we always talk about $3.5 trillion. That's about the money that we spend year to year. It's basically been this way for the last several years. There's no discussions of line item cuts, department cuts, those kinds of things. And while sequester was, what, $80 billion less a month, the interest is already up to 50 60 so it's not like we really are saving any money year over year. That's what's actually coming to a head and is effective October 1. The continuing resolution has to be signed, otherwise we can't move forward. Now, the strategy at this point from the House representatives was to gather together. Mike Lee was probably one of the key initiators of Defund Obamacare, He joined with Rand Paul, Ted Cruz, Justin Amash, several others that came on board with this. Even Marco Rubio here in Florida has been very supportive of this. And it was like, we're going to put forward a bill that will fund everything except the money for Obamacare. And they're stemming this from a couple of different reasons. One of the main reasons is, is the president had unilaterally decided that we're going to push the mandate away, push the mandate aside for employers. The employers won't face those penalties, even though you and I as an individual citizen will. That's one of the big reasons. Number two is there's been a lot of jobs already lost. There's a lot of 
fines and penalties for employers based on the number of employees they have at uh, 32 hours. So you're seeing people getting cut to 29. You're seeing the number of employees being cut below, I think it's 48. There's a lot of that, a lot of that kind of thing uh, in the works. And that's one of the reasons that they're like, you know, we got to get away from this. There's a lot of problems with the bill. It's 2,000-something pages now. So most folks have not read it. We have no idea what's in it. Uh, that was a Nancy Pelosi thing, right? you got to pass it so you can read it. And it is not a mandate. It is not a unilateral thing. There was not a single Republican that voted for it. Um, in the state of Florida, for instance, there's not a, you know, yes, the president, you know, won the election, but, you know, 4 million people voted for him. 7 million people did not vote for him. So I'm, I'm not sure that that's a mandate. So our intent this morning was to at least try to venture down this a little bit, start to get into the health care conversation, try to venture into some of that. And that's why we brought on uh, Paul St. John. Are you with us this morning, sir? Yes. Yes, thank you very much. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Now, Paul is a very active and uh, essential uh, piece of a family that we were very happy to have partnered with and known for a long line, Fred Brownbill's organization over at Save America Foundation. And, Paul, you've worked in the medical field for a very long time, right? Correct. So let's talk about what is the consensus, because I work in the medical field as well, Bob does as well, I'm heading to my 20th year now working in uh, medical in some way, shape, or form. What is your consensus? What are you hearing in the medical community and their response to a lot of the Obamacare changes that we see coming forward from a health care standpoint? Well, that is complete chaos. I mean, nobody knows exactly um, what the ramifications are. Um, the guidelines, there's over a 1,000 exemptions so far in the bill. So if you have enough influence and clout and a big enough uh, voice in Washington, you can get exempted. Uh, it's just utter chaos, not to mention the fact that basically we're broke. So how can we afford to, f to finance something when we can't even balance our own checkbook in Washington, D.C.? The, the formula for absolute uh, economic disaster. And as I understand it, let, let's talk about the you know the fear mongering that's in the head. The headline this morning, of course, just says shutdown. You know, shutdown looming, government shutdown coming, all those kinds of things. Is there really going to be a shutdown? We get to October second. Are we going to have chaos in the streets? Cats and dogs living together, fire and brimstone falling from the sky. Is that really what we're going to see? No, that fear mongering is just a way of creating pressure in the people to say make a deal. Well, to make a deal is that they will just inflate more money because we run our government on fiat currency. We have fiat currency uh, as our basis of uh, doing commerce. So they'll just kick the can down the road and ensure that when the day of reckoning comes, it will be more ubiquitous, more severe than anyone can imagine unless we uh, create uh, a monetary policy that is the same, and that's what's driving everything. It's really monetary treason when you look at how uh, this uh, secret cobble, the Federal Reserve, that runs our economy since 1913 has operated. It's not part of our government. There's nothing federal about it. Uh, there are no reserves. Uh, this is what is behind everything, uh, is... Um, a good way to put it is monetary treason, and it is not until we, the people, demand an honest uh, monetary system, and that is a system not just paper backed by nothing and the faith of the American people, because that faith is getting very thin, and this is just another example of debt. The people who, here's the basic uh, understanding, what every citizen should understand about the Federal Reserve, created in 1913. It's a banker's bank that was created in secrecy at a meeting in Jekyll Island, Georgia, by the representatives of the Rothschild family of Europe, uh, the Rockefeller family, um, J.P. Morgan interest. All these people that were competitors created a cartel for the purpose of eliminating competition. And so what happened is we went from a U.S. dollar to a Federal Reserve dollar in one year. Uh, we call them notes. What is a note? Is it an instrument of debt? So we went from a currency that uh, had a um, 
value-based currency to a debt-based currency. So today, all money represents debt. Why is that important for people to know? Because as we finance debt, the greatest way to create debt, by the way, is war. So shortly after the founding of the Federal Reserve, here comes World War I, and the whole 20th century is just one war after another. Ridiculous spending, uh, which Obamacare represents. And debt is good for people who finance the debt. Well, who finances the debt? The Federal Reserve. Where do they get the money to finance the debt? They print it out of nothing. But look, and then they charge us interest on the debt. Let's touch on that that's for a in- second because I want to get to the printing of the money because, I mean, that's obviously something that has become actually so public now. I mean, they, they, you know, it seemed like during the Bush administration headed into the early part of the Obama administration, it wasn't as public. Joe Public didn't seem to realize how much they're printing and the way they were saturating the market with currency. Now they just do it blatantly and obvious. They have it. They celebrate it on uh, Wall Street and uh, put it on every finance business channel. Why would they do that if it's going to be damaging to them? That would be what most people would be asking themselves, right? If this is such a bad well, thing, why why wouldn't they also be hurting themselves? Well, because it's not going to be damaging to them. The people who own the debt of this country, which is by far the Federal Reserve and the people who own it, we don't know who owns it and owns the Class A stock because it's never been audited in its 100 years of existence. But when this country goes broke, the assets of the country will belong to them. So there are many assets that the American people have no idea. For example, one of the more prevalent assets that are just um, discovered is a oil field that is in western Montana and eastern uh, North Dakota. Um, if your listeners want to go to the... Um, U.S. Geological Survey, they can see that the uh, U.S. Geological Survey has changed its estimates of the amount of oil that is in this oil field, and the latest uh, estimate by the the um, U.S. Geological Survey is that it is eight times the amount of oil that is in Saudi Arabia, the number one oil producing company of the world. This is part of this vast um, geological formation that goes from the Alberta tar sands down into the United States, the shale plates, because recently they drilled through that sh- those shale plates and found a lake of oil, which some people are estimating is going to be uh, half the size of Lake Ontario. Let me, let me, uh, let me, let me quote from that estimate. I'm going I'm to link to this on my web, on, on, on globaldispatch.com. You click, click the uh, dispatch radio, you'll have links to... Uh, Paul St. John's, he's got the Monetary Treason page on the State of America Foundation. You can get more information there. But let me let me read from, this is the May 2nd, 2013 article. I'm going to link to it. And at the end of this article, it talks about the estimate represents a nearly three-fold increase in mean average natural gas and a three-fold increase in natural gas liquids just from the 2008 assessment. So this means just in the five years... They're saying there's three times more natural gas than we knew was there just five years ago. So it's not as though we're talking about or what what Mr. St. John is saying is relative to, let's say, 30 or 40 years ago. It's not as though we're trying to say, look, they have all this information and we're comparing it as some sort of conspiracy theory from the 60s or anything like that. This is data that's coming out year over year that's pointing to massive amounts of resources that they're looking the other way. Am I, am I wrong on any single thing I just said? No, not at all. The formation, by the way, is called the Bakken Formation. You can look it up. The Bakken Formation uh, is 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 a wealth that is inestimable. Uh, we could pay off our debt, the real debt. Now, the phony debt that is owned by these people, these people, we should employ the racketeering statutes uh, that have been passed because this is the ultimate in racketeering. Uh, But we could pay off our legitimate debt next week simply by allowing uh, honest uh, oil companies to lease the oil that is in the Bakken formation. I mean, we have a treasure chest here, but the Obama administration wants to make this a natural park so no one can tap into this resource. And then when we go broke, 
you see that our resources, our mineral wealth, our oil reserves, our gas reserves will be divided up among the people who own the debt. And what our government does is focus on China buying our debt. Um, and the only reason they have any money is because we, they were granted most favored nation status by the Clinton administration. And so uh, there were no tariff laws and they passed all these international trade bills that made it easy for our industrialists to use their slave labor and then sell their goods and, you know, everywhere. Everything is made in China today. And so we have this huge imbalance of trade going on with this country. And then we're going to demonize these people because they finance our wars at a billion dollars a day. Uh, and they say, well, these are the people we should focus on about that own our debt. Now, the Federal Reserve owns 80 percent of the debt and maybe even more than that. Uh, China doesn't know what to do with our worthless paper. Um, and nothing will change until we, the people, wake up to this financial cartel that's been running America, just like a prolet bureau runs America. What happened in 1913 is there was a coup. There was a passage of three pieces of legislation that changed America forever. The first was the 16th Amendment, the so-called Income Tax Amendment. But if you go back and look in history, there are uh, what the Supreme Court did is just say that uh, the income tax was not a head tax, which it really is if you look at the constitutional definition, but is an indirect tax. And so an indirect tax um, is uh, taxed where the government doesn't come directly to you. Now, with that advocation, um, by the way, implementing the uh, 16th Amendment is implementing plank two of the Communist Manifesto, which causes, calls for a heavy progressive income tax. The second piece of legislation that constituted the coup was the passage of the 17th Amendment. This is the first big win for the Progressive Party. Uh, and what that is is the direct election of senators. So most Americans have no idea that from 1787 until... 1913, how senators wound up in Washington as they were appointed by the state houses in order to do the bidding of the state houses. No senator cast a vote without first the approval of his state. Well, they knew that you could buy politicians. And the next piece of legislation, which was the Federal Reserve, they literally created a counterfeiting money machine that they would uh, create inestimable wealth for themselves, because what they do after 1913 is charge us a tax. They charge us interest on creating fiat money. Now, what m most people have no idea is that if we were to pay off the debt, each American pay off its debt, and the government pay off its debt, we'd still be in plenty of debt, because the Federal Reserve only creates enough money for the principle of the debt. It does not create the money that it charges us for the interest on the debt, which is, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars now right. uh, because it's been compounding. Yeah. Uh, the best quote I can tell you about compound interest comes from Albert Einstein, who said, uh, all my discoveries pale in comparison to the discovery of compound interest. And these people know how to use compound interest. And so they have uh, with this enormous amount of money that we can't even imagine because it's never been audited, they buy up, uh, for example, Reuters. The Rothschild family has brought up Reuters, United Press International, Associated Press. Where we get our major um, information and newspapers get their information, there'll be no whistleblowing except for stations like this because they own the whistle. Right. Just pure and simple. So unless we, the people... To rise up, follow the instructions that are clearly laid out in the um, uh, Declaration of Independence. Because if you read the Declaration of Independence, everything that's happening in America, except for quartering troops in our homes, is happening today. I would encourage every American to read the Declaration of Independence, and you will find that everything our founding fathers rebelled against, except for that one thing, is happening today in America. Where can people get in touch with you? Uh, where will you be speaking next? And uh, what are some of the different things people can get more information on this? Well, I think one of the things that people need to understand, if they go to the Save America Foundation, uh, dot com, www.saveamericafoundation.com, uh, 
dot uh, org. We're an organization. Uh, we're a 501c3c. Uh, we're a non for profit organization, just an educational organization. I've been talking about uh, those educations, um, and we're um, we're here to save America, which means to save the Constitution, our founding documents. Um, they can go to Facebook, Save America Foundation, uh, 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 Facebook page. Um, and one of the most important things facing people when you're talking about the is there is an agenda that I started. I started a couple. One is monetary treason, which we've talked about. Another is, uh, and I hope we have some time to share this information with your listeners, is um, ignorance or genocide you decide. And we present evidence that there is a genocidal agenda. It's actually written down, by the way, in a monolithic structures in Georgia called the Georgia Guidestones that are uh, uh, these huge slabs of marble written in six languages that call for the diminishing of the world's population to 500 million people as being sustainable. That is the pre-world, pre-Civil War population. And... <clears throat> In order to do that, that means 6.5 billion people have to leave planet Earth. How do you do that? Well, I think you do it. It's basically a five-step program. You do it through vaccinations. You do it through mass medication of the water with fluoride. Uh, You do it through chemtrails. You do it through a HARP, uh, the High Aurora um, Project in Alaska, and you do it through putting a pesticide in everybody's body uh, made by a company called Monsanto, and that pesticide is called Glyphosate. And if people would just go to and listen to a new paper came out by a woman, a researcher at MIT, her name is Dr. Stephanie Seneff. Um, she has five PhDs. She's figured out what this stuff is doing and the genocide agenda of Monsanto. The most important, uh, the interview is Jeffrey Smith, who wrote a book called Seeds of Deception, the first really comprehensive book on genetically modified organisms. It's Jeffrey Smith uh, interviewing a woman with five PhDs, a genius. Uh, when you see her, she's so non-imposing. She looks like a, an Amish grandmother, um, a very simply dressed with white hair, but when she opens her mouth, you will be amazed at what this woman has discovered and the mechanisms for which um, um, Monsanto's Roundup is showing up in our bodies at unbelievable amounts. Well, we'll have to schedule a time where we can uh, get you back. We can get into more depth with that. We're kind of stuck on time here. I appreciate so much for the opportunity to be able to talk this morning. We're able to kind of raise awareness, some education, uh, stimulate some conversations out there on these different topics and the monetary problems that we're facing. And I look forward to talking to you again. Thank you again so much for your time. Yes, thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you so much. We are going to um, jump to a quick break. But before we do, let me uh, throw out a little question. If you'd like to call in, 727-441-3000, one I'm sorry, 1-866-826-1340. If you know which embassy Julian Assange is in in London, he is uh, in asylum in uh, London. He's not allowed to uh, leave London. He's uh, in a U- in an embassy there. You need to call in at 727-441-3000, and you can get a pair of tickets to join us for the Fifth Estate. And with that, when we come back from break, we're going to have Matt Carter from cartermat.com. We'll be talking TV news, and we hope to hear from you. This is Brandon from Dispatch Radio, and you probably hate taking your vehicle to the shop just about as much as I do. That little noise, that wobble, that rattling sound, well, we know it's probably something really bad, so we put it off and put it off. But I'm here to tell you about my friends over at Stouts Auto. Whether it be brakes, alignment, tires, AC, these are folks who just want to get you in and get you out, treat you right doing it. You have two locations in the area, 18300 US 19 North and Clearwater, and 1801 Belcher and Largo. There's two numbers, 727-400-6955 in Largo, 727-475-6006. 
Check them out. Give them a call. You can go to their website at stoutsauto.com. Tell them the Global Dispatch sent you. A new film titled The Fifth Estate centers on Julian Assange and WikiLeaks. Man is least himself when he talks in his own person. But if you give him a mask... He will tell you the truth. The Global Dispatch is sponsoring an advanced screening of The Fifth Estate on October 15th at the West Shore AMC. To get tickets and learn more details, visit theglobaldispatch.com and listen to Dispatch Radio Saturday mornings at 8 on the Tan Talk Radio Network. There's a great youth mentorship program in the greater Tampa Bay area. Mission Flight United is a nonprofit organization which reaches out to kids, especially teens, who love aviation and want to fly. Whether they have an interest in helicopters, fixed-wing airplanes, or aviation mechanics, Mission Flight United offers education, flight simulation, and great life application skills to help in all of these areas. For more information on their weekly classes or to make a tax-deductible donation, contact the instructor, Dana Walker, at 207 207- Two three three zero six six nine. With every fifty dollar donation, you get a one hour demonstration and can schedule a flight with Dana to see for yourself what Mission Flight United has to offer. Again, call Dana at two zero seven two three three zero six six nine, or simply Google Mission Flight United. <laughs> 